I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Nick Barashev, CEO of BMG Group. Thank you so much for joining me. Always great to see you online. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so we are catching up on our previous conversation, which happened all the way back at the beginning of 2022. So we have a lot to cover. I want to start off with gold's price activity this past year, because we're basically ending not too far off from where we started, although, of course, over the last 12 months, we have seen fluctuations. So gold's activity in 2022, what did you make of it? Were there surprises for you or was it as you expected? Well, the, the issue is that uh, the gold sort of um, not doing what it should be doing simply because of the strength of the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar is not strong because of fundamental or economic reason. It's strong because the euro, the pound, the yen are all incredibly weak. So international investors ha all have to jump into the U.S. dollar. So as, as the U.S. dollar maintains its strength, it, it negatively impacts the gold market. So, And we, we've started going up like today, the last time I looked, Gold was up $31. And likewise, for silver and platinum, percentage-wise, we're even higher. Um, so it's trying to break through, and it, it should be much higher. Uh, at some point, uh, there, there are many macro risks to the U.S. dollar. And, and when, when and if they happen, then um, there'll be a huge spike in gold. So, for example, uh, China and Russia are preparing to, to launch a new currency that would be used by all the BRIC countries, which will give competition to the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency. Saudi Arabia is toying with the idea of pricing oil in any currency. Um, any one of those things happen, the reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar is over. And And... I mean, there's been books written on the um, exorbitant privilege that the U.S. has had. Like the rest of the world has to make stuff, produce stuff, dig it up, do whatever. And the U.S. simply prints the money and buys it. Um, so that reserve status is a critical thing. So now the question going into 23, though, is going to be, what is the Fed going to do? They can keep raising rates, which will keep the dollar propped up or they, which will break the economy, or they can uh, pivot and start lowering rates, improve the economy, and, and it's uh, kind of between a hard rock and a uh, kind of choice, you know? It definitely is. And do you have any sense of what the Fed may do as we head into 2023? Because I think that is a key question that many people are wondering about right now. Well, you have to remember that the Fed is... Uh, a private bank and what's in their best interest but to, to maintain the strength of the dollar. They don't have a direct interest in the economy. So they can keep ra raising the rates until the economy completely breaks. Uh, a lot of people are already in trouble with their mortgages. They're going from 2.5% variable rate to 7% fixed. But the real risk is in some cases at 7%, they don't qualify for the mortgage at all. All right. So if we look at what the Fed has been doing in 2022, they've been raising rates, as we've been discussing. This is all in an effort to fight inflation. If we look a little bit about current events, we did get our latest CPI data today. So can you give me your thoughts on what we've seen in terms of inflation this year and your outlook in 2023? Because I think that will most likely have some bearing on what we do end up seeing from the Fed. Well, we've got inflation happening for two reasons. One is the excess money printing and the amount of new money that's been created this year um, is the highest in history. So we've got 
a lot of money chasing few goods. We've got uh, supply chain problems and, and so on. So, so you've got a shortage of supply and too much money all at the same time. Uh, the, the government statistics say that inflation is 8%. But if you go to John Williams' site, uh, he calculates it according to the original formula, and he gets about 18%, which is more realistic. Now, the problem is that the, the, the inflation was created by the Biden administration. First of all, they shut down energy production, which raised the price of gas and oil. So uh, that happened on purpose, and they're trying to blame Russia for it. But in the U.S., it was because Biden shut down production. Then, then they printed about $4 trillion of stimulus money to hand out. So now you've got too much money, and the uh, supply chains uh, haven't been cured. So I, I don't see that inflation is going to subside no matter what the Fed does. They can raise rates all they want, and all they'll do is destroy the economy. But the supply chain is still there. The excess money is still there, and, and inflation will continue. Yeah, and I think these are some of the themes that we've talked about before. One of the other things that people are wondering right now is, you know, can the Fed engineer this soft landing? You've gone over that with us before. You told us, no, that seems very unlikely. You've said multiple times, actually, that we may see a big stock market correction. So mm -hmm. I wonder your, your updated thoughts on that. Is that something that is going to be happening in 2023? Is this, is this the year? Well, I, I think people should look at some of the leading indicators. So as everybody knows, the, the FANG stocks were, were the best performing stocks, like fa Facebook, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and Google. Well, the, fa the FANG stocks have already had, had a correction of almost 50%. People were also enthralled with uh, cryptocurrencies. They thought they were going to become billionaires by holding cryptos. Well, Bitcoin is already tanked by 75%, and that's the best performing one there is. Overall, the cryptocurrencies, which had a market uh, cap of $3 trillion, were down to $800 billion today, like all of them put together. So those are the leading indicators of what's to come, and that, that shifts into the that traditional stock and bonds assets and just a question of when. But uh, the when... Um, can happen at any time. There, there are major sort of black swans, if you will, swirling around. And, and at some point, one of them is going to trigger the collapse. Right. And I remember you telling us before that when these big crashes happen or when there's uncertainty in the market, people tend to turn to cash. That's where they decide to be. But you did suggest to us that gold might be the safer area. So would that still be your advice to, to move into gold during these uncertain times? Well, because like if you consider cash, so let's say you have cash in a bank account, well, it's, it's eroding by the inflation rate. So either 8% or 18%, somewhere in there is how it's eroding. Uh, the minimal interest you're getting is not keeping you above water. So cash doesn't work. Gold hasn't had terrific performance, but it's at about 3% for the year. So you're not losing money um, and, it's, and it's holding its own. So that's, that's the, uh, the kind of the benefit of gold. But um, as I started to mention before, people aren't making the choice of this investment or cash or some other investment. They're saying, I need the money, and they're liquidating the investments and taking the cash out in order to survive. So that's a big difference. So that's not, not something that, okay, do we invest in this or invest in that? Uh, th those choices are seemingly eroding very rapidly. 
Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that, because just before we turn the camera on, you're telling me this has been the worst year for redemptions that you've seen. And it is because not because people want to buy something else, put their money elsewhere. It's because they need that cash right now. So right. talk to me a little bit about that and, and the impact. Well, in, in our mutual funds, we don't have a direct relation with the actual investor because we use financial advisors. So when there's a redemption, uh, we, we try and call the financial advisor and find out why the client redeemed. Um, you know, it's, normally it's to see if, if they're redeeming, moving to something else that's more competitive, we need to do that. But now what we're getting back from the majority of advisors is the client directed them to sell because they needed the money, um, either for mortgage to do margin calls on, on their accounts, uh, um, keep up with inflation, whatever. Uh, so that's a very bad sign going into 23. That does sound like a bad sign. And, you know, typically when I'm speaking with experts like you, I like to ask, you know, what can investors do in these circumstances? We're in very interesting times. I think it's hard to make decisions on what to do with your money. And that seems especially true right now when people might not be able to do anything with their money. They just need it. So what would your advice be at this moment? Well, we can't do anything because if the people need the money to uh, shore up their mortgage or, uh, or um, um, you know, pay for food and, and, and uh, gasoline for their cars and so on and so forth, they need the money and there's, you know, that's the end of it. Um, but but the, the investment industry as a whole and mutual funds, uh, and it's not just affecting us, uh, actually our redemptions are comparatively mild compared to the industry as a whole. So the entire mutual fund industry is, is having massive redemptions. And the advisors can't do anything about it other than, you know, process the redemption. This sounds kind of like a pretty scary situation. Have you seen anything like this before in your career? Is that never, never happened. Like the, uh, we've always had very, very minimal redemptions, but now we're getting redemptions even in the, the, the owners of bullion bars, which normally never redeem, never trade. They, they have their investments sitting, sitting in uh, brinks and so on. But now we're, we're seeing people having to liquidate their, their physical bullion holdings as well. Well, that does that. Down, and this is, this is unprecedented. This is something that you've not seen. No, no. In, in the, in the whole 22 years that we've been in business, it's never happened before. But th this is, uh, in some respects, you, you, you could see it coming because of all the, the COVID mandates, the lockdowns, uh, people lost their jobs, businesses were shut down, and and now the bankruptcies are picking up. People have um, you know tried to stay afloat, and they're, they're at the last choice, which is liquidating assets. So to me, this sounds like a situation that's very painful. We're going to be in this for some time. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, well, and, and unfortunately, no, I think it's going to get much worse before it gets better. And, and uh, the, most of the people are oblivious to what really goes on because the mainstream media doesn't cover any of this. Like the, this morning, for example, the, the um, illegal immigrants crossing the border went from a normal 2,000 a day this morning, it was 14,000. Not mentioned on any of the mainstream media. Second invasion. What, what, what is the U.S. going to do with all these people? There are tons of drug dealers, uh, gun smugglers, terrorists, convicted criminals. They're all pouring in. Okay, so it's going to be a tough year is what it's sounding like. I wondered if you could talk to me a little bit more about gold and silver prices in 2023. We know, as you've told us, that the U.S. dollar was a big headwind this past year. 
what do you see coming for prices? And just a reminder for those who may not be familiar, I know that you do have a long-term $10,000 gold price in mind, which relates to U.S. debt. But I'm guessing we're probably not going to be seeing that in, in the next 12 months. Well, there's a lot of people that th think gold is uh, and, and silver is undervalued and that uh, next year we're going to uh, go beyond 2,000 and maybe reach as high as 3,000 during next year. Uh, the, the question is, um, who's going to be able to buy it? So you've got small sector of people that have gotten very wealthy, uh, but the vast majority got much poorer. So, you know, do they have the money to invest in gold no matter how good the outlook is? Many of them don't. I think that's a great point. You know, even if we do see low prices, we have seen also that erosion of wealth. So is there anything more that you can say about that? Because I think that's a really interesting point that people might want to know more about. Well, that's that's right. The the, the thing is that in, in kind of numerous people have made calculations that current gold price should be two or three thousand, like right now. Um, so the likelihood that it'll get to that. But any of these kind of circulating black swans could happen any day, and you'd have a huge spike and also have trouble buying any amounts of gold or silver in quantity. It's getting progressively more difficult. Uh, the uh, uh, delays are building up, uh, and, and the availability of product is getting clear. So that's... Uh, that, that's another problem that's adding to the equation that the uh, people that have delayed and waited when they finally come around to deciding they need to buy some, not only will the price be much higher than it is today, uh, but the availability would could be considerably less. Okay. And so when we're looking at gold, silver in 2023, we've we've gone through a number of factors that people might want to keep an eye on. We have, of course, the Fed, we have inflation, we have interest rates. Are there any other elements that you are watching that you think people might not be aware of, might not notice that we really should be watching? Well, a number of central banks are doing test runs on a digital central bank cryptocurrency. Um, the, the UK announced one yesterday. Canada is looking at doing it and so on. If the cryptocurrencies get launched, I think there'll be a, uh, a a big flood into gold because it'll it'll be the only kind of not monitored thing that you'll know, have some freedom left. The cryptocurrencies, you'll have no freedom. They'll they'll be able to cut you off from your funds if you step out of line in any way whatsoever. Uh, similar to the Chinese social credit system. Um, so when, once the, those get announced in the mainstream media, uh, there, there could be a, a huge increase in the demand for gold and silver. Okay, that will certainly be an interesting point to watch. So as we are finishing up here, we've gone through a lot of things that I think people should definitely be watching heading into the new year. I do want to make sure to ask for your best advice for precious metals during this time. You know, we've gone through a number of points and it may be a difficult time to be advising people, especially if they do need to have the cash instead of putting their money into gold or elsewhere. But what is your best advice in the new year? Well, if, if you're tight for cash, the, the easiest thing to, to be doing is, is buying silver kind of on a regular basis and dollar cost averaging in. Silver is still affordable. It's just under 24 bucks. Uh, an ounce. So uh, even if you're short on cash, you can always still buy a few silver coins on a regular basis. At least that g gives you some coverage. Uh, so that would be the, the easiest thing to do. Uh, if you've got a lot of spare money, then, then you can buy gold and you go from there. Perfect. So we do have some options. Any final words that you would leave us with as we head into the new year? Well, like, like I say, the easiest thing is to dollar cost average in this silver with whatever spare money you can afford. Just accumulate as 
as they keep going, if they keep going. I always tell people, like, I, I, I bought a bunch of silver coins in 1999 ahead of Y2K. I paid $5 an ounce. They just sat there since 1999. All right. Well, that will be something for us to keep in mind. Thank you so much for coming on to share your thoughts. I think this is really valuable for investors. You're welcome, Charlotte. My pleasure. Great. And we'll be sure to catch up with you in the new year. Once okay. again, I'm, yeah. All Once of, again, all the best. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all that. Yes, of course. Once okay. again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network. And this is Nick Barashev with BMG Group.